Hey y'all, it's Shine International and I'm back with another video. Stay tuned so you can see how I melted this frontal without any baby hairs. Period. My pleasure. My pleasure. My pleasure. Everything is just fine. This beauty right here is a Peruvian bone straight uh frontal wig from pink lush beauty which is my hairline so this is a 13 by 6 frontal so it has a little bit more parting room than a regular 13 by 4 frontal unit i love it the lace is transparent because that's the only lace that i could wear anything darker than transparent um will have a line of demarcation for me because i am light skin also it is pre-plucked, but I always go in, go back in, and do my own plucking. But yes, I love this line. I love this texture. I love straight hair, period. You can purchase this unit and more at pinklushbeauty.com, and the link will be in the description box below. We're going to start off by bleaching the knots. So what you'll need is BW2 powder, 30 volume developer, a bowl, and a knife. And don't mind my bow. It has all types of concoctions, dyes, whatever you could think of, it has been used for. I do not use a brush to apply the bleaching um, solution or whatever onto the lace because it tends to push the bleach through to the actual hair and turn the hair blonde. So I use a knife for that reason. <laughs> As you can see here, I'm adding the BW2 powder and the 30 volume developer and I'm putting it into the bowl and I'm mixing it together. You want the consistency of the bleaching solution of that to be like um, shaving cream or toothpaste, like thick. You don't want it too watery, but you don't want it too thick. Now I'm going to proceed to lay the bleach all over the lace. Some people only like bleach the hairline and like the part, but I just bleach the whole lace so that if I want to change parts or anything like that, there won't be no issues. The knots will be all bleached. So I just, wherever I see lace, I'm bleaching it, period. Twenty minutes later. Okay, so I'm gonna be dyeing my wig black. I'll be using a door in the shade Jet Black. I'll be using the watercolor method to achieve this color. So go ahead and get a container with boiling hot water. And once you do that, you'll be putting the dye inside the water and mixing it with your dye brush. Then you'll proceed to dip the hair inside the water until it's the color um, that you're trying to achieve. Please do not get any dye on the lace. So I'm dipping it, but I'm not letting the lace touch the water at all. With dark colors, such as like blue, red, like dark colors, black, it will tint the lace and you will have a line of demarcation. So you wanna make sure that when you're doing the watercolor method, you don't touch the lace with dark colors. Like lighter colors like lavender, pink, those don't matter. 
but dark colors blue red all that you want to green you want to avoid dipping the lace inside the water so in order to get the hair that you didn't dip you'll go ahead and put the dye into a separate bowl and you'll use your dye brush to touch all the the areas that you didn't get with the dipping part so that's the roots that's be beyond the roots like a little bit past the roots and this is a good method so if you accidentally got some bleach on the hair and turned it blonde by accident you could go ahead and color correct at this time this is why i bleach the knots first before i dyed the hair Now we're on to the plucking. I think I'm gonna make a separate video getting more in depth. But for the basics of plucking, it's kind of hard for me to explain because you have to have an eye for it. But I use a thick tweezer and I use the pointy side facing down. And I just tweeze in different areas. I pull like the baby hair, like the front layer of hair out first. Then I pluck behind it so I can get a nice gradient effect. If you get what I'm saying, so I don't stay in the I don't stay in the same spot so that I won't accidentally make a bald spot. I usually tweeze in sections from ear to ear, so I start from one side and work my way to the other side, and I just jump around and I tweeze kind of fast, so it was kind of hard for me to slow down, but I just pluck until i get that gradient effect that natural like ugh, you gotta have an eye for it Okay, so this is the finished result. I like to have a natural hairline. You could pluck in some more if you feel like it. Just be sure not to over pluck because after a while, once the frontal starts getting old, it'll look like straight lace and no hairline. So just keep that in mind when you're plucking. Okay, so let's get down to the nitty gritty. Please don't mind how I look. I've been at the shop all day. It's like 11 p.m. at night right now, and I just look like a damn grease ball. <laughs> but nevertheless, we're gonna go ahead and prep the cap. So I'm gonna use Ruby Kisses um, in the level 12 to go ahead and color the cap my skin color. Usually I do ball cap method on myself and on my clients but i was feeling lazy and sometimes on myself i don't really care too much to do the ball cap method because it really doesn't matter when it comes to my own installs so i just go ahead and put the regular cap on i'm gonna go in with the same concealer that i use mind you this is cream concealer not powder so Ruby Kisses Cream. I'm going to go in with the same shade that I use on my cap on the actual lace. Now make sure that you make sure that uh, where you're going to be laying the lace down is the same color. Because sometimes people have two tones, especially in the summertime, people getting tans. So just make sure that it's actually the same shade but for me it's the same shade so i'm just gonna go ahead and tip the lace to my skin color i'm just getting a visual of where i'll be placing my lace before i add the glue you don't want to go in blindly you just want to get a idea of where you're going to be laying the glue down before you start laying it down. 
Also, before I lay the glue down, I always clean the areas with alcohol and a paper towel. Get rid of all that makeup, get rid of all that sweat, oil, dirt, all that. Take it off my forehead so that there won't be any issues with my wig laying down. Now, I use Ghost Bond. I didn't get to show it in a clip, but I use Ghost Bond. Um, I also use Bow Hold, but I didn't have Bow Hold at this very moment, so I will be using Ghost Bond. So, yeah, I use Ghost Bond. I use four to five layers of Ghost Bond. You're going to make sure that it's clear before you add your next layer on. So you do one layer, make sure it's clear, then you do the next one, and you repeat until you get to four to five layers. You can use less layers if you want to, but because I want mine to last, I'm going to use more layers. So after I apply my layers of glue, I proceed to lay the lace. I always start in the middle to make sure it's flat with no wrinkles and it's not lopsided. And I work my way to the sides. I don't cut the lace first only because it helps with the melt, with the meltdown, as well as it gives you something to hold on to when you're shifting the lace and you're laying the lace. Now it's time to cut the lace so I take my scissors and cut like little sections because I'll be cutting the lace with a razor okay so when I use the razor I cut as close to my my forehead as possible so you want to tug a little bit on the on the lace just to, to make sure you're cutting whatever is not melted into your skin it's okay if you cut a little bit of the hair out, that's fine. If you did a good job plucking, that won't matter. You wanna make sure as you're cutting, you're laying the lace down with your comb or your finger, but make sure if you're using your finger, you clean it, you make sure you wash your hands or spray it with alcohol so that oils from your finger won't get onto the lace. When it comes to the side, by my ear, I always use scissors. Be careful, don't cut yourself, and always leave a good amount of space between the lace and your ear so that it won't irritate you and make you want to take your wig off. We're almost to the end of the road, so everything is cut. Now it's just time to reinforce the lace whatever part of the lace is lifting up use your tail comb and very small amounts of ghost bond to just press it down and melt it into the skin if you did your placement right and your glue and you did follow the steps that i just gave you you shouldn't have that much like lace lifting up At this point, I'm just going back in, tweezing where I feel like I would like my hairline to be thinner on fleek. I'm loving how it's coming out so far. If you see an area that you feel like you could have plucked a little better, go ahead in and make sure you make sure your lace is down before you start plucking and just go ahead and thin it out a little bit.
always got to secure the back of your lace. So I had somebody help me out, cut the back of the lace and strap it up. I used the straps that were in the back of the lace along with the combs to secure the back. Just to make sure that my lace is melted, melted and not going anywhere, I'm using an elastic band to melt it down even more and I'm blow drying it for like two minutes. Then I'm gonna proceed to go ahead and do whatever part that I wanna do, which today I'm gonna do a middle part. And at this point, it's just, we're good to go. The lace is down, secured, and now we're gonna move on to styling it. And yeah. This is the final look. I decided to do some curls or whatever, whatever. Yes, girl, lay to the gods. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. I hope you guys learned how to melt a lace. Also, if you're located in Atlanta, make sure you come check me out. I do one-on-one -on -one hands-on classes so you can learn my techniques. And you can come book an appointment with me so I can slay you, poo. Leave your comments below, like, comment, subscribe. Thank you so much again for watching this video.